Hello, Tiffany Ariel here, and we are back with another video. So this is not a moving vlog, but this is a moving related video. As some of you may already know, if you've watched my other videos, I'm in the process of moving from Austin, Texas to the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm currently in San Francisco, but ultimately I will be living in Oakland. So as part of that process, I did have to travel across the country with my cat. Um, we did not drive because that would have been entirely too much, but we did fly. And I got a lot of comments like during the trip of like, oh my God, like your cat is so calm. How did you get her to travel like that? Mine would be freaking out. And I was like, mine would be freaking out too. But I would say there's two major keys to getting here in one piece without too much stress. I do think she was probably still a little bit stressed, but for the most part, she was okay. And then I was mostly okay, even though I was definitely also a little bit stressed. But two major keys. One is preparation. Make sure that you are prepared for everything. And number two, medication. And that's probably the most important thing. So I already have to medicate her to take her to the vet and things like that. So I already kind of was used to giving my cat pills. Um, it's not easy to give a cat pills, I will say that. Um, <laughs> I will not give a tutorial how to give a cat a pill. Like there are some tutorials on YouTube, but it's it's a bit of a, of a struggle. But I did find a trick this last time and I'll get into that later. So yeah, so medication is number one or number two, but really number one. So let me just go ahead and talk about the medication. And so she takes two different medications. She takes gabapentin and she takes trazodone. Um, I'm not really sure what the difference between both of those are, but I think initially they just gave me gabapentin and like that didn't work. It wasn't enough. <laughs> so they also prescribed the trazodone and I'm supposed to give her both and I'm supposed to do it the night before a stressful event. And I'm also supposed to do it the morning of like two hours before any type of stressful event. So in this case, I did the night before we traveled and then I did the morning of our flight. Um, so in addition to the medication, like I said, preparation is a major key. So first and foremost, if you are flying, make sure that you research the airline's policies on pets. Um, I decided to fly Southwest because most of the airlines that I saw, even if they allow pets, they would say, oh, you can bring a pet and you can bring a personal item. You can't bring a pet and a carry-on suitcase. Um, as far as I found, only Southwest and JetBlue were the only ones that actually let you bring a suitcase in addition to your pet carrier. Now, maybe some other airlines don't enforce this. I don't know, but this is what American, United, Delta, this is what all their websites said was that pet carrier plus personal item, no suitcase. Um, now I was moving, so I needed to have a lot of stuff. So I was like, that's not going to work for me. So I ended up flying Southwest because JetBlue, their flight schedule just didn't align with what I needed. Um, so that's, that's one, make sure you research any flights or if you're staying in hotels, make sure you research that as well. Because I also found that some hotels do allow dogs, but they don't allow cats. So you have to kind of call them and make sure because they would say, oh, pet friendly. But then when you call, they're like, oh, only dogs under X, Y, and Z pounds. And so I ended up staying in an Airbnb the night before we got here because I couldn't find any hotels that were actually cat friendly. Um, so you have to kind of research your accommodations. Then for the actual traveling. So one, if you are traveling with a pet, they do have to be in a pet carrier. So I have her pet carrier here. I got this one from Amazon and I, of course, everything will be linked down below, but I specifically chose this one for a couple different reasons. Number one, it's fairly large. It's much larger than the one that I had for her initially. And I wanted her to have a bit more room to move around while we were traveling. Also, because it's kind of made for traveling, it does collapse. So you can be pretty confident that it's gonna fit underneath the seat in the airline, um, on the airplane, sorry. And another thing why I reason, blah. And another reason why I got this one is because, it opens from the top. And the reason why that is helpful is for two reasons. Number one, you do have to take the cat out or dog out of the carrier to go through security you have to take them out and then like carry them through the metal detector and then the carrier goes through the x-ray um so it just made it a little bit easier for me to be able to take her out of the top um and i'll kind of come back to that actually yeah let me just come back to that so as i mentioned you do have to take the animal out of security so for that reason i recommend a harness and a leash because I didn't know how she was gonna behave. She's not used to being out in public. One thing that I absolutely did not want to risk was her possibly getting away from me 
while she was out of the carrier so i put her harness on her before i put her in the carrier then i was able to just kind of open it from the top clip the leash on and then lift her out of the top um and that was definitely easier than having to try to like reach into the front of the carrier and try to clip on a leash especially if she's anxious and she's kind of like why are you reaching at me like yeah, so I would definitely recommend the carrier coming from the top. And the second reason, I talked about the medicine earlier, but when I gave her a medicine, I did the same thing. So I put her harness on her, I put her in the carrier. Then I was able to kind of lift her head up through the top of the carrier and give her the pill. And if you watch a video on how to give a cat a pill, I think it will make a little bit more sense. But basically what you have to do is kind of like tilt their head back and like squeeze the side of their face to make their mouth open. And then you kind of have to like rub on their neck to like make them swallow um, because they don't like pills. So they will kind of spit them out if you don't make them swallow. But being able to do that and kind of get her head back and have access to her head without having to worry as much about her legs and feet like scratching me <laughs> during the process definitely was a huge help. So yeah, harness and leash. So regarding the harness, you definitely want to make sure that it is a cat harness. There are dog harnesses and there are cat harnesses, and they are not the same. If you buy a dog harness, your cat is likely going to be able to jump out of it. The first time that I put this harness on her, she actually did jump out of it. Um, she was going crazy. I wish I had video of it, but this was like a couple of years ago. It was actually quite entertaining. She really was just leaping, trying to get out of the harness, off of the leash, and she jumped out of it because I hadn't tightened it enough. So that's the other thing. You need to make sure it's a cat harness and you need to make sure that it is tight enough. It should go kind of around their neck and then kind of clip underneath their front legs. Um, but yeah, make sure you get a good harness. The leash is just a regular leash. You can use any old leash. I got a retractable leash um, because I wanted to be able to keep it pretty tight um, while we were in the airport. But you know, maybe, maybe at some point I might see if I can train her to walk on a leash. I don't know about that, but we'll see. Another thing that may help, I ended up not using this, but this is, um, what is this called? I think they're called Thunder Shirts, but it's basically like a compression garment for them. And the compression is supposed to calm them down, although I don't feel like it worked for her. Also, I think this may be a little bit small. Maybe that's what it is because she definitely seemed very uncomfortable in the compression shirt. So I actually took that off of her. I did not travel with the compression shirt, but depending on your cat, it may be helpful for you. Um, but yeah, I'll link it anyway. So that's pretty much the main things in terms of the actual traveling. Now you might say, okay, well, what about food? What about water? all that bathroom all those kinds of things so her food and water bowl are from cat it they're already cat it whatever it's called they're already pretty like shallow um and then i had her food mat so i just went ahead and threw those in my carry-on along with everything else and i had a little ziploc bag actually no i actually had a, a thing of food um it was a small bag of um, cat food, like a three pound bag that I just had some left. So I just had that in my carry on as well. Um, she ended up not dr eating anything or drinking anything while we were in transit, but you know, before like in the Airbnb and then after we got here, I definitely, it was nice to just have her bowls as opposed to having to like run to the store and buy cat bowls or something like that. Um, regarding bathroom, again, she did not use the bathroom while we were in transit, but I was prepared just in case. I have a pop-up litter box and it came with a mini scoop so this is also from Amazon basically everything is from Amazon um, the litter box it also comes with a pop-up bowl I have not used this bowl because like I said I traveled with her regular bowls but this could work if you are not traveling with actual bowls you could use this temporarily um, the scoop I haven't used the scoop either that's why I'm just holding it like this because I ended up not needing it um, but I did use this pop-up litter box um, when we were in the Airbnb and I thought I was going to use it when we first got here but my apartment my housing people they actually gave me a litter box so it was already here ready and waiting so that was really nice of them and then regarding litter what I did was I put some litter in a gallon ziploc and then I just double bagged that and put that in my carry-on as well which again I ended up not needing because they left some litter here for me um, and I had some left that I used in the Airbnb but let me just show you how this works so this is how it is like collapsed. It's pretty small, so you can definitely throw this in a bag. And when you're ready to use it, you just kind of unsnap it. And you unfold it. And I actually need to clean this. It's a little bit dirty. Yeah, I need to clean this. I actually have not opened this since we left from the Airbnb. But yeah, so it's about, this is the, I don't know if you can tell, but 
Macy be this way. But yeah, they have different sizes. This is the large one because again, I just wanted her to have more space. But they do have another one which is smaller. Um, and yeah, it also has a lid. Like, I guess you could zip it up and like carry it by the handle if you wanted to. But I don't know why you would do that. Oh, I guess maybe if you were just going from point A to point B and you didn't want to like take all the litter out, you could like leave the litter in and like zip it up. Maybe, I guess. I don't know. I haven't done this. I just put a litter box liner in here and then put the litter. And then the next morning when we left the Airbnb, I just took the liner out and threw it away. Um, but yeah, I need to clean this. So I'm just going to set this over there so I remember to clean it. But um, yeah, I think that is the main thing. So we went over the medication. We went over the carrier. We went over the harness and the leash. We went over the thunder shirt and we had the pop-up litter box. So those are the main things that really came in handy when traveling with a cat. Um, I definitely feel like you kind of have to do some research and you have to know your own cat. Maybe your cat is less anxious or more anxious than what mine is. Mine, I feel like it's fairly anxious. She gets really stressed when people she doesn't know comes over to the house. She also gets stressed in the car, you know, things like that. So if your cat is fine with car rides, they might be okay. But of course the airport is just a stressful environment for pretty much anybody. There's a lot of people around, you know, cats typically they stay in the house. They're not used to just being in crowded environments, you know. So just to conclude, I was able to have a relatively stress-free trip with my cat, um, thanks to everything that I mentioned in this video. So don't forget to check down below if you're interested in any of the items. And also don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And I'll see you next time. Bye.